With the resurgence in artisan bread baking and sourdough breads, I think it's time for us to make a pizza peel. The centerboard of the pizza peel forms part of the handle, but without this additional top piece, it would be too thin for a comfortable grip. I rough it out close to the line on the bandsaw and finish it off on the sander. The transition at the front of the handle is shaped with a rasp. I've shaped the handle of the longer breadboard peel uh, with a matching curve to the front curve, set about a half an inch back, and half the thickness of the handle. That's the same bevel that I'll be using on this front edge. Set the arc for this, I used a uh, drawing arc. The arc is set basically so that I'm only 3 eighths of an inch at the outside edges to the touching point in the center with an echoed arc right behind it. And that's what I'm going to bevel away. For the back part here, where the handle comes in, handle will be about there. And I may refine this handle shape further. I've drawn in um, kind of a curve back here, coming in to a point down here. I used a radius guide to lay out a gentle curve to make this transition from the handle into the arc that's going to cut away for the back part of the board. For the pizza peel, it's a little bit larger, a little bit wider. I've decided to, to make an arc at the front. I want it fairly flat, but not completely flat. Um, that'll allow for easier scooting off of the pizza, pizza onto the stone in the oven. I set this at about three quarters of an inch back with a second arc going to be about half an inch back from that. That's just perfect. So then I'll just hold this down and draw in that arc. And that's what I'll cut off on the bandsaw. There we go. Now I have my second bevel drawn in. For the sides, I'm going to use the same arc, make a little bit more pleasing shape than just a rectangle. Also, the pizzas that are going to be put on this are generally going to be round, so I'm maximizing the width, giving kind of a guide there for the pizza maker as to how big of a pizza they can make. To get the balance for the side arcs, I need to do this top arc first. And again, that's going to be laid out. I have the handle set here. I've drawn in how that connects in here. I'll take my largest diameter circle to make a nice transition from this point, just the start of it, and the same transition on the other side. My pizza being round from the center, if I have uh, 16 inches, I can do about a pizza to come right around here to be round. I want to make sure that that still is within that circle. So my arc can be roughly like this. Now how do I obtain that? I'm going to have to pull in quite a bit on the string here. And I want to put the 18 mark, the top of my arc, to the outside. That actually looks pretty good to me. I want to use the same part of the arc, so I've watched the measurements. So this is my arc for the top side of the board. Then I'll put an arc in on each side of the board. And I want to cut away a little bit of that material on the sides, um, just because I have some flaws and things. So I'll be cutting away this outside part again, leaving a nice arc. And that'll give me a balanced shape for my pizza board. I'll take it to the bandsaw and cut those shapes out. 
First I'll do a little bit of cleanup with a card scraper. It works great to clean up the glue lines and flatten out the figured maple. Before I can cut the arc here, I have to make some relief cuts. I take the edges down to the line with the sander. A final fairing of the curves is done by hand. For shaping the ends, I've drawn a mark a little farther than halfway. This is the top side, this is the back side. A little bit more than halfway down along the edge. And once I have that fairly close, it doesn't need to be exact, and I'll come by with a rasp. The rasp is meant to be held in both hands, uh, holding this tip and up in the handle, in one direction only, because otherwise you'll dull the teeth. Um, they only cut in one direction. And this half is done. I'll finish this off by sanding it once I have uh, both sides of it done. The front side is very similar. I have that line drawn that tapers out. And I'll plane that down to meet this line that I've already done on the back side. And then finish off with a rasp and sanding. Basically what I'm after is this almost razor sharp edge here, not quite, but um, a nice fine edge. And to prevent tear out on this edge, I need to come in from the opposite direction. Again, I'll take the rasp, the final cuts will be at the same angle going down, which ensures that I have an even edge all the way across. And I can just watch for the light to make sure that my scratch marks are even all the way across. But that's the general idea, and then followed by sandpaper. This next step is completely optional, but it's something I decided I wanted to do. I'm gonna put um, some hanging holes in each of the handles. I'll use a contrasting walnut, and the ring will be about a three quarters of an inch circle with the hole inside of that for hanging it. Both of these are gonna be end grain, kind of like inserting a dowel into a hole. First, I cut those holes out using a Forstner bit. Then I use the Panna router to create a dowel that will fit inside. I'll also drill that hole on the Panna router um, at the same time so that it ends up exactly in the center of that dowel. Confession time. I had a little bit of a tear out on the back side of the handle when I drilled the original uh, three quarter of an inch hole on the maple and walnut board. So I just decided rather than trying to fill that and make it even more ugly, um, even though it's on the back side, I'm gonna make the hole one inch. So I made it a little bit bigger, covering up that tear out area on the back side making sure I had everything firmly clamped to the supporting backboard on the drill press. And um, now I've got a one inch hole to put the walnut in. So the hole inside the walnut, I'll just have a nice big walnut ring there. It'll be fine.